welcome back. Uh, in the last lecture, we were discussing about the source space and what uh, we wanted to uh, prove is that the proposition uh, <coughs> if f is in source space, then f hat is differentiable moreover f hat prime at j this is equal to minus 2 pi i x f x hat at j. That means, what we mean by that, that is if g of x is equal to minus 2 pi i x f of x, then d by t j of f hat at j is equal to g hat at j. That is what the meaning of this and then we have uh, seen that it is a question of taking the limit inside. Now, as uh, so what is our um, in order to show that what we need to look at is this quotient f at j plus h minus of f at of j divided by h minus uh, minus 2 pi i x f x hat at z. Now, this is equal to 1 over h you can take minus infinity to infinity. This is f of x and uh, then e to the power minus 2 pi i j plus h x mm, minus e to the power minus 2 pi i j x that is from f at of j and then I can put this as h minus this is the integral minus infinity to infinity minus 2 pi i x f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx the whole mod this is modulus of minus infinity to infinity f of x then this is e to the power minus 2 pi i j plus h x minus e to the power minus 2 pi i j x divided by h and then minus e to the plus 2 pi i x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x d x whole mod. Now, as you can see that uh, because x and f of x, so they are uh, integrable function, they are in small space, both x f and x f x, they belongs to small space for epsilon positive there exists a n such that uh, integral mod x greater or equal to n mod of f of x dx is less than epsilon and integral greater or equal to n mod of x f of x dx is less than epsilon that is the tail of the integral they uh, are small. So, therefore, what we will do is that we will break this integral into this mod x less than n and mod x greater than n. Now, so this integral this is lesser equal to mod x lesser equal to n modulus of f of x and then this this quantity plus 
mod of x greater than n then this quantity dx so that is what we will plug in if we push the mod inside. Now as uh, what one can see is that in the finite interval case mod x less or equal to n there will exist uh, uh, there will exist a uh, delta such that if so let us call this as i 1 plus i 2. Now for mod h less than delta this i 1 I can find a delta such that this quotient plus e to 2 pi i x dx so this is equal to less than epsilon by n. So, what I am trying to say is uh, e to the power minus 2 pi i j plus h x minus uh, e to the power minus 2 pi i j x divided by h plus 2 pi i x e to the power 2 pi i j x this is less than epsilon by n. Uh, there exists a delta such that this happens. So, this i 1 is lesser equal to epsilon by n with the inner 1 and then I have got minus n to n uh, mod of f of x dx. If I pull out the supremum of f then this is what I am going to get this some constant times epsilon and in the second integral i 1 is less than and i 2 being the tail is less than epsilon. Therefore, what you get that the entire thing. So, this is hence uh, we get f hat prime of j this exist and this is nothing but 2 pi i x f of x hat at z. A f is in the source space then f hat is differentiable. Okay, so, now observe f hat if f differentiable uh, f is in sword space then f is twice differentiable that is fairly easy f hat is twice differentiable that means f hat prime is nothing but so let g of x is equal to minus 2 pi i x f of x then clearly g belongs to the swar space because f is in swar space. Now, f hat prime is equal to f hat prime of j is equal to g hat of j that is differentiable. Therefore, f hat prime whole prime is equal to g hat prime of j that is equal to minus 2 pi i x g of x whole Fourier transform at j. Now, this is equal to minus 2 pi i x square f of x j. So, we can continue inductively. So, what we can get as a matter of fact, we will write another proposition. So, if f is in Schwarz space, then uh, g f hat 
mth derivative of j this is equal to minus 2 pi i x to the power m f of x whole Fourier transform of j. So, this is uh, f hat is smooth and it f hat derivative can be written as the polynomial times f and its derivative uh, and its Fourier transform. So, this uh, now we can state our theorem what we are looking for if f is in Schwarz space then f hat is also in Schwarz space. So, this is a nice symmetry of Schwarz space vis a vis Fourier transform. So, the for the proof of this we have seen f hat belongs to c infinity of r. So, that is the first condition of the Fourier transform is satisfied. Now, what we want to look at is that, so we would like to look at the decay whether how much of the decay this we can generate whether this f hat derivatives they are killing the polynomials or not. So, to show the rapid decay let us look at z to xi to the power n f hat m of xi. Now, look at this. So, this is is equal to xi n and this f hat is minus 2 pi i x to the power m f of x whole to the power xi whole hat xi. Now, you take this let us say call this as the g m the function g m. In our earlier observation what you know that this is some constant uh, times g m n and then this hat at xi. I take the nth derivative every time you take the derivative of the function and take its Fourier transform you are going to hit with uh, e to the power 2 pi i j and that is why I have put the constant uh, n c here which will certainly be dependent on n some constant. More precisely it will be 1 over minus 2 pi i to the power n. Okay. <clears throat> so, now if I take the modulus of this then this is lesser equal to some constant and then this is what we have seen mod of g m n at x d x and this g is a g m is a Schwarz class function it is all its derivative are in Schwarz class function. So, this integral is finite because g m n they have the appropriate decay. So, this is lesser equal to some a n m a constant which is finite this is true for all j hence this is true for all j thus f hat this belongs to the Schwarz space. So, it is not just by accident that uh, if f is a Gaussian then f hat uh, is a Gaussian the generalization is that even if uh, f has uh, rapid decay and smooth function then f hat is also going to have rapid decay and smooth function. Okay. In order to do Fourier analysis, uh, uh, so we will be restricting ourselves uh, to do the Fourier analysis on this uh, source space. So, we can define f hat and the natural thing is that one would like to ask uh, is that uh, can we have the inversion and the Planserol formula for uh, 
all the function in the source space. Of course, uh, all these they go to much larger uh, space. F for that, we would be requiring uh, some more uh, concept about the integrability and in this course, we are uh, not going to deal with this most general theory of the Fourier transforms for integrable function. What we will confine ourselves to develop the analogous theory as what we have seen in f for the case of the Fourier series as well as for the finite abelian group in this setting uh, in R, but we restrict ourselves for with to the space of sword space and certainly this can be generalized. So, but to get a feel for the Fourier analysis uh, on R, uh, to do everything on the Schwarz space is uh, a, is not a bad uh, effort. Okay, so let's uh, in in order to do the inversion or uh, Planserl, what we have seen is that uh, two things uh, which. Uh, plays a major role. One is of course, the uh, convolution of two function. So, um, first let us see that if f and g belongs to the Schwarz space, proposition then of course, f convolution g is defined even we have studied that uh, with the moderate decay how we were able to get f convolution g. So, in this case then f convolution g also belongs to the source space. So, to see this for source space, what we need to do is that uh, first we will check that they are infinitely differentiable and the function as well as all its derivative will have the rapid decay. Okay. Uh, so, clearly what we know f convolution g this is differentiable and this f convolution g prime of x. So, this we have seen uh, in the circle also the proof is exactly the same. So, what we can do uh, uh, is equal to this is limit h goes to 0. I will just sketch it for to recall. Uh, so, this is f convolution g of x plus h minus f convolution g of x divided by h. So, this is limit h goes to 0 integral minus infinity to infinity f of x plus h minus of y minus f of x minus of y divided by h into g of y dy. And uh, this is going to be f prime of x minus y and for the convergence you can take that limit to be um, break it with the mod x less than n mod x greater than n the same argument. So, this will tell that this is minus infinity to infinity f prime of x minus of y g of y dy which is equal to f prime convolution of g of y. By repeatedly if we take then f convolution g of k kth derivative this exists and this will be nothing but this g 
and all the uh, f kth derivative there again in the Schwarz space. So, we can define the convolution has no issue over that. So, what we want to show is that x to the power n and f convolution of g mth derivative this is at x we want to check the modulus of that. Then this is equal to I can x n f m convolution of g at x that is from the above observation. Now, if we take the so, this is going to be uh, minus infinity to infinity x to the power n f m x minus of y then g of y dy. Now, this is uh, going to be you look at minus infinity to infinity x to the power n then this is tau y of f m at x. So, this g of y dy and this is in the Schwarz space we get the decay from here g is integrable and so we can get that this is hence f convolution g also belongs to the Schwarz space. Okay. So, now the next uh, important thing as we are talking about is that presence of a good kernel. So, now recall that what was a good kernel? The good kernel was that uh, if we take a non-negative function the integral is 1 and away from the origin uh, if you are taking a sequence then as n goes n becomes large this integral the area under this uh, family this becomes very very small. Okay. So, to define that uh, let us say good kernel. we say a family k delta where delta is positive delta positive uh, is a good kernel or approximate identity identity if one k delta of x is greater or equal to 0, 2 integrals minus infinity to infinity k delta of x dx this is equal to 1 for all delta and for eta greater than 0 integral mod x greater than eta k delta x dx this goes to 0 as delta goes to 0. So, this is what is an approximate identity as we have seen that if you take f uh, a remark we cannot have you see the Schwarz space uh, f convolution g is in Schwarz space. So, like in the Fourier series we can ask does there exist 
a g in the swar space such that f convolution of g is equal to f for all f in the swar space. That is uh, uh, then if this happens then we say that the swar space has an identity under convolution, but as we know that uh, this cannot happen because of the riemann lebesgue lemma which will say that if this happens then f convolution of g hat xi is equal to f hat of xi. Now, I choose my f. So, this is true for all f in the swar space. In particular, take f is equal to e to the power f of x is equal to e to the power minus pi x square. Then, what I we have got e to the power minus pi j square g hat of xi. This is equal to e to the power minus pi j square. Now we know that e to the power mi minus pi j square never vanishes. This will imply that g hat of xi this is equal to 1 for all j. Remember that g is a Schwarz class function. Therefore, g hat is also going to be a Schwarz class function. Uh, therefore, it cannot be constant. It has a rapid decay. So, this hence uh, conclusion is there is no identity under convolution in swar space. So, once there is uh, no identity, so it is natural to look for an approximate identity. Just like in the series case, we will uh, convince ourselves that why the definition of approximate identity. Thank you.